Yes, I got friends on tour. Yeah, if you want to, well, I'll go show you a couple of them. Yeah, this here is Fast Eddie, uh, it's Rainbow Warrior, or whatever. Rainbow well, Rainbow Warrior, Warrior Deadhead, Rainbow Warrior. an American hippie. Been out yeah. there and following the Grateful Dead 16 well, beautiful rainbow here. years. Living a life as an American hippie, just trying to make it in America. Living it to fullest. And getting ready for Woodstock this year, and we're gonna tear it up up there this year. We buddy? do the job right because we do it twice. <laughs> right on, man. That's all you get, guys. Uh -huh. We do the job right because we do it twice. All right, brother. Give him a laugh, bro. What? One laugh. <laughs> Give him a wavy laugh. <laughs> right on, bro. All right. Oh God, the first dead show I saw was. Probably 1967, back at, uh, might have been the Boston Tea Party back in Massachusetts. I was still in high school. It was a blast. It was a real blast. Our commune, the Earth People's Park commune, we uh, bought land in the late 60s and early 70s and let whoever wanted to live on it, live on it. We bought a mile on the Canadian border in Norton, Vermont that uh, is still there. We have 90 acres in the California Redwoods that's there for anybody to live on. It's deeded to everybody on Earth. Uh, we have, you know, wild, wild sexual orgies. I mean, uh, it was nothing. It was just, it was being free. It was the freest I think I'd ever been. I mean, there was no hang-ups or anything, but you could be walking by a room and there'd be 10 or 15 people in there having fun. And I remember, uh, we went to the Clapp Clinic in Berkeley once because someone from uh, the East Coast had been visiting and it turned out they had the Clapp and there was about 18 of us the next day just taking precautions. I don't agree with, you know, free sex and, um, and that kind of free love as in the 60s. I think that free love uh, is a much bigger concept than just sex. I think it would include sharing with your brothers and your sisters, concern about the world. I think a lot of people confuse the 60s with the Grateful Dead kind of uh, cult because I think it's so much different. I think a lot of us are for the 90s and for what's happening now in, instead of trying to relive the 60s. I remember once um, we did this free concert with the Grateful Dead in 19, October of 75 in Golden Gate Park. It was the last one that they did before Bill Graham died. It's early morning. We were doing the security and the setup and everything. And we hear this sound way off in the background. It sort of sounds like thunder. And it keeps getting louder the closer it gets. And we're wondering, you know, just what the hell is this noise that's coming? And as it gets really close, we can tell it sounds like a pack of motorcycles, Harleys. Well, it's the Hells Angels. There's about 200 of them. They pull up to the backstage entrance. The first two that are riding up front leap off their bikes, just like cowboys coming off a trail drive. They casually walk up to the fence, pull out their wire cutters, cut the fence, roll it back. Now, real nonchalantly, all the bikes come in. They roll back the fence, hook it up. Everybody seems to be lost. As the children, they have no cause to follow, and very few heroes to try to teach young people not, not to abuse their body or their soul, and try to do good and get along with people. And as you can see, we seem to do it pretty well. This has always been there for me, and, and my family has always been there, but spread out physically. And, and here, it's like a group of people that are always in one place. This is my last tour forever. This is it. This is the last tour, and after that, I'm, I'm gonna get a real job <laughs> and try and try and assimilate into the 
the real world. I think that, uh, I don't know, I think there's a lot of young kids, homeless, that no one really wants and they just end up here. They're here for the drugs, you know, some sense of family, but uh, if this is the only family they can find, you know, I think that's pretty, uh, pretty bad because, I don't know, I think most of the kids who end up here like that end up, you know, they're 16, they're smoking crack, they're smoking coke, or they're booting, you know, heroin. Um, you know, it's not, I don't think it's as pretty as what it appears to be. I mean, you know, come the middle of the night, there's fights, there's, there's blood. I mean, in most of the, most of the arenas, there's a, uh, there's an effort to get most of these people out of there by then. When I first did this, you know, I could make money and I could see the shows every night. I had a nice time. I got to see the country for free. You know, the only reason I come now is it's a job. You know, I have a job when I'm not here, but I make five bucks an hour at a, you know, at a bakery. So I work all week and I make, what, 100 bucks, 150 bucks? You know, on a good night I can make that in an hour. I like that. The last four or five years it's definitely deteriorated. I think you can definitely trace it to around 88, 89. And the Grateful Dead's popularity took off then. I mean, before then there wasn't the little teeny bopper scene, which there is now. And that has definitely increased over the last five or six years, which has helped to increase vending, which has helped to increase drugs. Uh, minimum drug sentencing has become, I mean, it used to be five years ago, people would walk around and say LSD. I mean, wide open, it was mushrooms, LSD. Every third person was saying LSD, LSD, ecstasy, X. Now you hear little whispers because people are afraid that they're going to get arrested with a half a page of LSD and go to jail for 10 years. Uh, some of it has to do with the Grateful Dead. I mean, they've pretty much been apathetic and, and apolitical for all these years, and that, that helps to cause a problem. And this is my last tour because I can't stand what it's like out here, you know. Uh, these people say, oh, we're peaceful, we're respectful, we love, but, you know, they don't do any of those things. They're disrespectful, they don't understand common courtesy, they don't have respect for other people, um, they have no boundaries, you know, with other people. Um, I, I think they use that, that as a cover to be selfish, you know. I don't know. You know, I'm sad because I like the music, I hate coming. I hate, at three o'clock, you know, I said, come down here with your camera at three. See the violence, see the drugs. Man, I, you know, I sleep with a weapon here. I, you know, I'm scared. Gave away everything. Sold my car, 75 bucks. Came here with my girlfriend, traveling around. Seeing the, seeing the world, seeing life, living. Free from just jobs, a lot of worries. Just driving around. This is my first show. Not my first time with drugs. It's great. A few days ago, my friend, um, he was in the Cal Expo shows. And he saw a friend of his, this girl, and she said that on her way to Cal Expo show, she was driving like through the trees or something, like redwoods or something, and she saw an angel walking in the trees. And so she pulled over to see what the angel was doing, and the angel told her that on June 17th, 1994, that the, set, the first trumpet will blow of the seven angels in Revelations. And the girl who was driving, she was just like really freaked out by what she had just seen. And so she, was, she just kept driving and a cop pulled her over. And she, she told the cop her story. And the cop said that eight other people had told her the same thing. Love. Ooh, the universal language besides music, man. <laughs> Raging and rising. Love, 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 yeah, let's see. I don't think I've fallen in love with anyone yet. But there's a lot of fucking cute boys out there, dude. The highest concentration of cute boys is on the dead lot, and it's really cool. In the world, dude. And so fucking, fuck love, dude. In the world. So, He's like, like, come on. I suppose love's like a good ideal, but there's just so many cuties, dude. Fuck it. My parents were divorced, and so. I just stayed with my mother. She was kind of young, so 
I just went where she went, you know. I was about, I think about eight years old, my first show. Also that same year I went to my first Rainbow Gathering. I live in a very faithful way, and I know that things are going to happen to Babylon, you know? Things are going to happen to make this peace sucks. happen. To make the society to realize it. To make it's the, not the, working the peaceful now. transformation it's not, of the world People happen. are not, we're becoming overpopulated, and, and you know, and everyone's just, it's money, 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 money heart, you know? In my heart, I know that I am going to live, and I know that no matter what earth changes happen, Ja will always guide me to the safe place where those things have to happen. And that's what Grateful Dead teaches me, you know? All these people here, they're all here for the same reasons. They're all here for that vibe, you know, the love vibe. That, that you cannot Faith. find anywhere else. You can't become a part of the concrete jungle, you know? We, uh, we drove from Ontario to uh, Chicago and our one van wasn't working right, so we left it there with our stuff in it. And Met a guy at a, a blues festival down there. That city drives to Sacramento. And so we drove with him and the van broke down like six times. And uh, got it towed like 200 miles. <clears throat> and uh, then we made it there and it, we had to leave it there because we couldn't get it, afford to get it fixed. And then we uh, rented a U-Haul. We said we were moving and we took a U-Haul from there to uh, to Seattle, and uh, so now we don't have any wheels or anything, we're just getting our eyes on the Miracle Bus. <laughs> I suppose you could just follow the Grateful Dead and dedicate yourself to, you know, be dedicated, but that's not much of an existence if you don't have some purpose, you know. And like right now, I, I'm on ecstasy, and what that shows me is all the different fears I have and it helps me to just break down all those walls and stop getting stuck in such the movie of things, you know? And to stand up high on top of the mountain and look down and just see the truth within it all and that we will always have everything we need. If we believe, if we believe in Mother Earth, she will always protect us. And those who don't believe in her, then they're gonna get caught up in the destruction of it all. But I have faith that there's going to be peace on Earth and those people who believe they're gonna all be here to see it. And those people who don't believe, they're just gonna see the destruction of it. <laughs>